Hi, welcome to TP Not Wheat TV. I'm Tom Payne, Managing Director of TP Not Wheat Solutions and Zircon. We're a company that deal with invasive plant species around the UK. Wanted to talk to you today about another invasive plant species called Himalayan balsam, as you can see I'm surrounded by it here on a waterway. So it's a very invasive plant, also a very attractive plant. I wanted to let you know a little bit more about it. It's an invasive plant that was brought to the UK from the Himalayas in the late 18th century as an ornamental garden plant. It was very cost effective and uh, obviously the bees love it as well, which I'll talk about in a second. And um, yeah, spread very easily from there due to its invasive nature. And I want to let you know how to identify it. There's lots and lots of Himalayan balsam around the UK. How to identify it, the problems associated with the plant and also the solutions and how to control it. So here's one that I pulled up here. This is a Himalayan balsam plant in the summer, so we're in August now. So you can see it's two to three meters tall up against me. And the most distinguishing feature of the plant is the flowers. We've got very attractive, bright pink flowers. They're white to pink in color. The bees absolutely love this plant species. There's hundreds of bees around us now, pollinating the plants. They absolutely love it. And so you've got these bright pink flowers this time of year. You've got these big thick stems, two to three meters tall with the elongated leaves with serrated edges. Now, this plant spreads via seed. So on the top of the plant and also on, off the branches, you have lots of seed pods. Now, this is how the plant spreads, but each plant has about two and a half thousand seeds. So you can see how easily it can colonize a whole river embankment very quickly with the help of water, especially with flooding and waterways. So if we have a look at the seeds, they explode at this time of year. So we're in August. They, they're pretty much there. They need a little bit longer on some of them, but they explode, pop in the seeds up to five meters and then regrow in the following year. It's an annual plant, which means a new plant grows each year from the seed bank. The seed bank can stay in the ground for about two to three years. And uh, the key really is to make sure that we get in this plant before, it's, before it has any seeds on it. And that way you gradually get control of it. So if we look at the top of the plant, we've got a lot of seeds here that are mature and they pop very, very easily. And then shooting out new seeds that will grow next year. So this gives you an idea of how to identify it. I've obviously pulled this one out of the ground. It's got a very shallow root system. So unlike Japanese knotweed, another invasive that we deal with, which has a very extensive root system, this one has a very shallow root system. So you can see here, it's a very thick, mature plant, shallow root system, and it's important that this plant doesn't get into the waterway by the seeds or the stem because it can regrow from the root and stem material here as well. So I'll put that there. It's got a green to red stem on there. So that gives you a bit more information on how to identify it. The main problems with this plant is obviously with the seed spread, it colonizes embankments very easily and that outshades native plants within the UK meaning that they, the bees don't pollinate those ones, they only pollinate the Himalayan balsam. The winter comes along, we've actually been to the site in the winter as well. The, the embankments are absolutely barren, which then causes issues with riverbank erosion, uh, sediment issues as well, and uh, obviously the native plants don't get pollinized and, um, and they don't become established because they're outshaded. So they're really the main problems with Himalayan balsam. It's also classed as controlled waste, so if you have the soil on site, We've carried out a lot of Himalayan balsam remediation projects for our construction clients where we've had to take off the top 300 mil of the soil where the seed bank, the main seed bank is and remediate whole embankments for them to try and get rid of this plant species quickly. So it can become a big issue and it's very expensive with it being classed as controlled waste. So there are your main problems. Now the ways we deal with it, as I've said just now, we have excavation where we do that for, mainly for commercial clients excavating the top 300 mil of soil, taking it to licensed landfill that's controlled waste. We also have balsam bashing and pulling, which we do in the early season. That's before the seeds and the plants are, are well established. 
there are no seeds on the plant at that point and we pull up the plants via the root system put them on the floor and uh, they gradually decompose and then you're gradually getting rid of that seed bank there and uh, and getting on top of the plant another method is herbicide treatment which we can carry out at uh, this time of year and slightly slightly earlier which basically kills the plant using a glyphosate based herbicide uh, obviously with aquatic approval and uh, you're then getting on top of the plant species that way as well so i hope you found that informative gives you a bit of information on the plant how to identify it the problems and the solutions Please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it. Also visit our website, tpnotweed.com. Got lots of information on there about the plant species. Uh, feel free to get in contact via email, telephone, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks very much.